Namaste garden enthusiasts! Welcome back to Hydrohaven, where today we're exploring something truly miraculous, how certain weeds native to India can transform barren, lifeless soil into rich, fertile ground, bursting with potential. These remarkable plants, often dismissed as unwanted carpetoir, kerpvar, are actually nature's own soil restoration experts. Whether your garden is suffering from overcultivation, chemical damage, or simply poor soil quality, these five Indian weeds offer a sustainable, low-cost solution to bring your midi, mitti, back to life. I've seen these plants work wonders in my own garden and across various regions of India, from the arid lands of Rajasthan to the dense forests of Kerala. So let's dive into these botanical treasures that can help restore the jivan, jivan to your soil. Amaranthus viridis, the humble cholai, kolai. Amaranthus viridis, commonly known as cholai or slender amaranth in India, is often seen growing along roadsides and in neglected fields. This resilient plant is far more than a common weed, it's a powerful soil rejuvenator that thrives where other plants struggle. Cholai develops an extensive root system that penetrates compacted soil layers, creating channels for water infiltration and air exchange, two critical factors in soil restoration. These roots can break through even the hardest, most degraded soils, initiating the recovery process at the most fundamental level. What makes chalai particularly valuable is its ability to accumulate remarkable amounts of nitrogen and phosphorus from the soil, even when these nutrients seem depleted. When the plant is cut and used as harikad, shriikad, or green manure, these nutrients return to the soil and forms readily available to subsequent crops. The decomposing plant material also introduces organic carbon, the foundation of soil fertility. For best results, cut chalai plants just as they begin flowering and work them into the top few inches of soil, where they'll decompose rapidly. Within weeks, you'll notice improved soil structure and moisture retention. One farmer I met in Uttar Pradesh restored a completely barren field using only strategic plantings of chalai for two seasons, transforming it into productive vegetable land without any additional fertilizers. Portulaca oleracea, kulfa, kulfa, the mineral miner. Portulaca oleracea, known locally as kulfa or body noon in different regions of India, is a succulent ground cover that specializes in mining minerals from deep soil layers. This incredible plant, with its reddish stems and small paddle-shaped leaves, contains an impressive concentration of calcium, magnesium, potassium, and iron, all essential elements for healthy soil and plant growth. Kulfa's succulent nature makes it exceptionally drought-resistant, allowing it to grow in harsh conditions where soil restoration is most needed. Traditional farmers in India have long recognized kulfa's value, calling it miti kadost, miti kadost, or friend of the soil. Its horizontal growth habit provides excellent soil coverage, reducing erosion and water evaporation, while its roots help stabilize soil particles. To harness kulfa's soil-building potential, allow it to grow in problem areas for a full season, then chop and incorporate it directly into the soil before it sets seed. The high mineral content decomposes to create rich, balanced soil. Alternatively, make kulfa kikad, kulfa kikad, by fermenting kulfa plants in water for two weeks before diluting and applying to gardens. This creates a mineral-rich soil drench that jumpstarts microbial activity in dead soil. A small farmer in Gujarat showed me how he used kulfa to transform a patch of alkaline, salt-affected soil into productive land within just one growing season. Synodon dactylon, dub gas, dub gas, the soil stabilizer. Cynodon dactylon, known as Dubgas or Hariali, is perhaps India's most resilient grass species. While many gardeners battle this persistent plant, its extraordinary ability to stabilize and regenerate soil makes it invaluable for restoration projects. Dubgrass develops an incredibly dense network of underground rhizomes and surface runners that can penetrate and break up even the most compacted soils. This extensive root system, which can reach depths of over 2 meters, brings numerous benefits to degraded land. It prevents erosion, improves water infiltration, and gradually increases organic matter content. The Sanskrit texts refer to dub as durva, durva, considering it sacred for its life-giving properties. Modern soil science confirms what ancient wisdom recognized. Dub grass significantly increases soil microbial activity, particularly beneficial bacteria and mycorrhizal fungi that form the foundation of soil health. To use dub grass for soil restoration, Allow it to establish in damaged areas for at least six months. Its presence will gradually improve soil structure and build organic matter. 
Before planting crops, either incorporate the dube into the soil as green manure or use a no-till approach by cutting it at ground level and planting directly into the resulting mulch. One remarkable project I visited in Rajasthan used strategic dube grass plantings to halt desertification and begin rebuilding topsoil in severely degraded land, transforming barren sand into productive soil within three years. Tridax procumbens gamra gumra, the nutrient accumulator. Tridax procumbens, commonly known as Gamra or Ekdandi in various parts of India, is a remarkable pioneer plant that specializes in restoring nutrients to depleted soils. This unassuming daisy-like weed with its small white flowers contains exceptional levels of nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium, the three primary nutrients needed for plant growth. What's truly special about Gamra is its ability to extract these nutrients from soil layers where they're bound in forms unavailable to most plants, effectively mining resources from seemingly depleted earth. In traditional Indian farming systems, Gamra is sometimes called Dharti Ka Doctor, Dharti Ka Donkter, or Earth's Doctor for its soil healing properties. The plant produces abundant biomass even in poor conditions, and its deep taproot breaks through hardpan layers that restrict water movement. To harness Gamra's benefits, allow it to grow for a full season in areas with poor soil, then cut it, just as it begins flowering. Either incorporate the plant material directly into the soil or create Gamra Ras, Gamra Rs, by fermenting the chopped plants in water with a bit of jaggery for 7 to 10 days. This concentrated liquid fertilizer can be diluted and applied to jumpstart biological activity in dead soil. A community garden project in Maharashtra demonstrated how strategic use of Gamra restored abandoned brick kiln soil to productive capacity, creating fertile ground where nothing had grown for decades. Oximum tenuiflorum, Tulsi, Tulsi, the microbial activator. Osimum tenuiflorum, sacred tulsi or holy basil, might seem an unusual inclusion in a list of soil-restoring weeds, but wild tulsi behaves much like a weed when conditions are right, and its soil benefits are truly exceptional. While cultivated for religious and medicinal purposes, tulsi also functions as a powerful soil probiotic. Its root zone harbors an incredibly diverse community of beneficial microorganisms, including nitrogen-fixing bacteria and phosphorus-solubilizing fungi that make nutrients available to plants. These microbial relationships allow Tulsi to thrive in poor soil while simultaneously improving it. Known as Pavitra Pauda, Pavitra Pauda, or sacred plant in Indian tradition, Tulsi releases aromatic compounds through its roots that stimulate soil microbial activity far beyond its immediate growing area. These compounds have been shown to increase beneficial microorganisms while suppressing soil-borne pathogens, creating balanced, disease-resistant soil. To use Tulsi for soil restoration, plant it densely in problem areas and allow it to grow for a full season. The soil directly under and around Tulsi plants will show dramatic improvements in structure and fertility. After the growing season, incorporate the entire plants into the soil where they'll decompose to create rich, fragrant humus that continues to support diverse microbial life. An organic farming collective in Tamil Nadu demonstrated how incorporating wild tulsi into their rotation completely transformed heavy clay soil within two growing seasons, eliminating drainage problems while dramatically increasing soil carbon content. The beauty of these five plants, Shalai, Kulfa, Dubgas, Gamra, and Tulsi, lies in their accessibility and ease of use. Unlike expensive soil amendments or complex restoration techniques, these weeds grow readily and work tirelessly to rebuild soil health naturally, just as they have done in India's diverse landscapes for thousands of years. To implement a weed-based soil restoration program in your own garden, consider designating a recovery zone where you allow these beneficial weeds to grow for at least one season. The temporary untidiness will be rewarded with dramatically improved soil for years to come. Remember that timing is everything when using weeds for soil restoration. Allow them to grow vigorously, but harvest before they set seed to prevent unwanted spread. The best stage for incorporation is usually early flowering, when the plants contain maximum nutrients and biomass. Work them directly into the soil or create jivam root jivamart, by fermenting them with cow dung, jaggery and pulse flour, a traditional Indian biofertilizer that accelerates the conversion of weed biomass into stable soil humus. The journey from lifeless dirt to living soil takes time, but these five Indian weeds can dramatically accelerate the process. By working with nature's pioneering plants rather than against them, you tap into ancient wisdom that recognizes the healing power of plants often dismissed as worthless. Your soil and everything you grow in it will thank you for this respectful approach to restoration.
that honors the natural cycles of growth, decay, and renewal. If you found this exploration of India's soil healing weeds valuable, please subscribe to Hydrohaven and share this video with fellow gardeners who might be struggling with poor soil. Drop a comment below sharing your own experiences with these remarkable plants. I'd love to hear how they've worked in your garden. Remember, healthy soil is the foundation of everything we grow, and sometimes the plants we need most are the ones we've been taught to pull out and discard. Until next time, Subketi, Shubketi, happy gardening.